Well, perfectly put, Dickie V. And what a scene here at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. And what a night on ESPN. A triple header beginning here in North Carolina with South Carolina and NC State. Then we head to the Champions Classic with two big games as we welcome you courtside. Hey, everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. You ready to get this thing started? I think it's a good way to do it, one versus five. Yeah, not bad at all. And when it comes to the top-seeded South Carolina Gamecocks, a lot of talent, but the star that shines brightest, Aaliyah Boston, back for her junior seniors. Yeah, one of the absolute most dominant low-post players in all of women's college basketball. You need to send multiple bodies to her. You cannot handle her one-on-one. -on -one. Last year averaged 14 points and 11 and a half boards a game. Dominant on the defensive end as well with her ability to block shots. Terrific getting to the offensive glass. Over four offensive rebounds a game. She is an absolute beast in the post. This South Carolina team returns all 11 players from its final four team a season ago. They have the number one recruiting class with three players in the top five, and Aaliyah Boston, a preseason first team All-American. Meanwhile, for NC State, Elisa Kinane leads the charge. I love that we got a battle of the bigs here tonight. Elisa Kinane for NC State has got the finesse inside. She can score right hand, left hand, but she is also very good and capable. Stepping out to the three-point line, shot just under 40% from deep a season ago. Also a good passer. She is the heart and soul and leader offensively for the NC State Wolfpack. Best preseason AP poll ranking for NC State since 1979. The Wolfpack returns all five starters and Kanane, the ACC preseason player of the year, projected to be a first round pick in next season's WNBA draft. Well, these fans are ready to go. A sellout crowd here at Valvano Arena at Reynolds Coliseum. The earliest meeting between two top five teams in 20 seasons. It happens on November 9th in Raleigh. Saxton and Kanane to jump it up. And this season is underway. You see NC State starting out in man-to-man -man defense. They will give Aaliyah Boston a ton of attention when she gets a touch inside. Gets a touch outside here. Here comes Bree Beal on the attack, lays it in. Great sign for South Carolina for Beal to be aggressive going to the rim. You see the NC State starting lineup. Big name to point out there, Diamond Johnson, the transfer from Rutgers, a very talented player. She's in the starting lineup right now with Kayla Jones still working her way back a bit from a knee injury. Otherwise, she probably would have started and Johnson likely would have come off the bench as Kanane can't quite finish with the baby hook. And when these teams met a season ago, South Carolina did not send a double to Elisa Kanane. Same starting five for South Carolina from the group we saw go to the final four a season ago and lose a heartbreaker to Stanford, that thrilling one-point Stanford win as Henderson banks it in. South Carolina has looked really good attacking the paint. They were so good in the paint a season ago, not just from their bigs, but their guards getting inside. Henderson poked it away, and then a foul called against NC State. Good D there from South Carolina, led, of course, by Dawn Staley now in her 14th season, one of six active head coaches who have won a national championship. Just a, a very nice new seven-year extension, well-earned for Coach Staley, just under $23 million. And Kanane is going to quickly check out after picking up the personal. So Kanane out. Camille Hobby in. Boston gets stuck between Hobby and Brown Turner. It's going to stay here with South Carolina. Wes Moore in his ninth season leading NC State. 2-0 record against AP number one teams. Both those wins happening last season, including one against South Carolina in December. That jumper is good. Everybody getting involved early this time in Zion Cook. The guards have looked really good. The entire perimeter so far early here for South Carolina, taking smart shots, looking to attack, playing within themselves. 
Isaiah Cook is such a dynamic offensive player and here just curls around the screen, has great elevation, can shoot over Diamond Johnson. South Carolina starts this game three for three from the floor. Here's Reina Perez, the transfer who Westmore called a blessing last season. Said she was even better than expected. Shot clock fading here. Down to three. Perez flips it in. Nice poise there from Reina Perez. And even on the make, look at South Carolina pushing pace. That's what they want to do, get up and down the floor quickly. Henderson, one of the best in the country at doing so. Couldn't finish there. Perez flings it down the floor. Johnson trying to find the cutter hobby. Last hits her. And NC State turns it over. Shot clock coming down. We saw Perez do this in some big moments a year ago, Ryan. And here, just trying to make something out of nothing, doing a good job with it. Last year was second in the ACC with just under five assists per game. Well, that's going to trickle out of bounds as South Carolina turns it over. Now, we talked with Dawn Staley about did she talk with her team and talk with Aaliyah Boston, with the group at large about the way things ended against Stanford, such dramatic, heartbreaking fashion, the tip from Aaliyah Boston just missing at the buzzer and said we, we kind of moved on everybody's so excited for the season but she said the one thing we did talk about is the margin of error saying that's how close it can be between advancing or not between winning a championship or not literally inches away from advancing to the national championship game and they look like a team that is coming in here and is going to grab everything that they can I mean, they are playing hard they are on point right now south carolina is Three turnovers already from NC State. Here's Beal. Cook thought about it. Gives it up in the corner. Henderson, the ball fake, the drive, and that's going to be a charge. Reina Perez waiting there to take the contact. I like the poise, though, that we saw from Zaya Cook on that possession as we get another look at the good defense as Perez came over. Great job getting her feet set. But Zaya Cook, her decision-making was improving throughout the course of last season, including in the NCAA tournament, not forcing shots. It's going to be important for her to have really good shot selection this season. Good fake, Brown Turner. Will take and hit. But without Kunain on the floor right now, NC State is missing their anchor inside. They play through her and around her. Westmore taking her out quickly after that first foul. Here's Henderson. Boston will give it back. Cook leans in and banks it home. She's tough to guard. She's tough to guard because she's explosive off the bounce. She can shoot from the perimeter as well. We saw her score 25 in that game against Stanford in the Final Four. Johnson, quick first step, bursts inside, and then gets denied by Aaliyah Boston. We saw it so many times a season ago with Aaliyah Boston just cleaning things up, and she does it here in the paint. We saw it a little bit earlier out on the perimeter. She's got that six, seven and a half wingspan, so she can get to the ball. Had a triple-double with blocks in her first ever collegiate game. First player to do that. A junior now as Perez splashes in another mid-range. But nothing easy. Nothing easy for NC State. They're having to create off the bounce in order to get looks. Penane still a spectator after that early personal. Dump inside, too strong. Henderson throws it away, and South Carolina has its third turnover. One more pass, one more pass to Cook in the corner, and she would have been the guard to have the angle to get the post entry. What did you think about the strategy of Westmore getting Kunane out of the game that quickly? I understand why, because the next possession, you saw Boston go right at Hobby. She's a player who's tough to defend and can put fouls on you quickly, Ryan. Here comes Beal, blasting down the floor.
Boston, the footwork and the finish. She has looked great. They are playing through her at the high post, using a lot of handoffs to get the guards open. There she understood she could take it and get the score herself. Dawn Staley told us she's probably the player throughout camp that has looked most like she's in midseason form. Yeah, she's leaner and quicker than she was a year ago. That's without question. Abby will fire no. A 10-6 lead early for top-ranked South Carolina. Cook from the corner, too strong. Saxton in the offensive rebound. Henderson slides in for two. One of Westmore's big keys. He said we have to limit transition points and limit offensive rebounds. And South Carolina is terrific. Getting to the offensive glass, and they will make you pay when they do so. South Carolina out-rebounded their opponent in every single game last season. Brown Turner gets bumped, got it back. Saxton the rejection, who's gonna get it? Henderson to the floor with it. And it's gonna be South Carolina basketball as Henderson calls timeout. Strong start for Aaliyah Boston and the Gamecocks. Aaliyah Boston is 6'5", and you know what she is, Ryan? She's dexterous as she <laughs> takes it to the bucket. We see it, big girl. Well, a couple of dramatic, heartbreaking finishes to seasons for both of those All-Americans a season ago. Elisa Kinane and NC State losing in the Sweet 16, upset by Indiana. And Aaliyah Boston in South Carolina coming that close to making it to the national championship game, only to see Stanford go on to beat Arizona. Boston on the bench now. We get a chance to see for the first time in South Carolina uniform, Camilla Cardozo, the transfer from Syracuse. The college basketball season tips off today. And what a way to start it off on ESPN of the app with the 11th annual State Farm Champions Classic at Madison Square Garden this year. Number three, Kansas takes on Michigan State, seven Eastern, four Pacific. And then number 10, Kentucky squares off against number nine, Duke. It's a sonic blockbuster type of night. A few substitutions here. Kayla Jones in for NC State. Her minutes will be limited a bit after coming back from knee surgery. Kanane back in after playing just a minute and 14 seconds following that early foul. Raven Johnson, the number two overall recruit in for South Carolina as well. The freshman getting early minutes. Number 25 with the basketball right now. A knee here, steps inside, can't hit the jumper, long rebound, corralled by Crutchfield. Yeah, really nice job by the entire NC State squad to box out on that possession. It's not just the bigs, your guards have got to get a body on as well. Perez given space, connects on a three. Seven first quarter points for Reina Perez. Yeah, use the handoff of the player, the 6'7 player, the big, and make her try to come out and defend, and she did not. Perez gets the good look. A 12-9 South Carolina lead. Turnover here. The flick ahead to Perez. Kick out, Jones, quick first step. Kanane. Good close out there, couldn't get it off, and then Kanane misses it out of bounds. Good D there from the transfer, Cardoso. So you bring your five player out in the handoff, and 6'7", Cardoso is not going to step out and defend there. A handoff works like a screen, and so Perez gets the wide open look. One of the few easy looks we see for NC State here in the first quarter. It's going to be interesting too, Rebecca, looking at NC State and seeing you know, how they balance Diamond Johnson with Reina Perez. Does Johnson play, like we saw at the start of the game, more off the ball with Perez the point? Does Johnson run the offense at times as well? Well, Johnson's certainly a player who can create her own shot. She did that last year at Rutgers. 
An average just under 18 points per game at Rutgers as that one banks in for Zaya Cook. Six points in the first. Cook now three for four from the floor. Here's Jones. Oh, nice look. Catch, fire. No. A three no good for Brown Turner. Cook dumps it underneath. Extra feed Henderson. Short on a three. Offensive rebound. Cardozo finds a meet here for two. Really good basketball by South Carolina. Initially in their offense, making the extra pass, and then even on the offensive board to find the open player inside. South Carolina, 8 of 12 from the floor in this opening quarter. NC State, 4 for 12. Perez can't hit. And the foul called against South Carolina. Initially, Perez went to the left side, and Jones was telling her, no, go back the other way. Continue to make Cardozo try to defend out on the perimeter, whether it's on ball screens or handoffs. That's number two on Destiny Henderson. So Raven Johnson, the freshman, is going to come in and grab Henderson. Henderson doesn't know it. Now she does. No, she knew. She was just looking the other way. It's an old trick. Yeah, trying to hope it didn't happen. Is that the trick you tried to pull in the national championship game yeah, when, right. when D gave you your third foul? Man, D Cantor, yes. D, one of the officials tonight. D Cantor, along with my Forsberg and Billy Smith. About a 10 second difference, game and shot clock. Cook wasn't rushing into a two for one. Taking her time. Now eight to shoot. Cardoso over to Littleton. Off on a three. Rebound poked away. Loose ball. Scramble for it. It ends up out of bounds. NC State basketball. That last offensive set for South Carolina, NC State went over that in their shoot around this morning, and they did a really nice job of getting the ball out of Zaya Cook's hands. And NC State with plenty of time to get off a look here. 6.9 to go in this first quarter. Perez looking in, finds Kanane, gets it back on the attack. Perez lays it home. Nine in the quarter for Reina Perez, and that'll end the first. South Carolina, a 16-11 lead after one. Number one against number five. Perez with nine points on 4-4 shooting for NC State. Wes Moore called Reina Perez a godsend a year ago. She has certainly been good here in this first quarter. First game of our triple header. You see the outstanding games that follow. Good one here. NC State, South Carolina. South Carolina, 10 of their 16 points in the paint. NC State turned it over five times in that first. Reina Perez was four of four. The rest of NC State just one for nine from the field in that opening quarter. Here's Jones, high arcing three off the mark. This is our first look at the really big lineup for South Carolina with both Aaliyah Boston and Camilla Cardoso in the lineup together. Yeah, what are your early thoughts, Rebecca, having not seen it yet, about how they might be able to mix together? I'm eager to see it because Aaliyah Boston is really a good player from the high post, and so they can work a high-low together. I think it's going to be a dominant rebounding lineup that they can use. That last possession you saw NC State going to a zone defense, but here you see wonder if NC State will try to take advantage of Boston out on the perimeter and get Jones some looks outside. Camila Cardoso was the ACC Freshman of the Year at Syracuse as Perez finally misses one. Boston secures it. South Carolina off and running. See Destiny Littleton, a player who Dawn Staley very excited about her being healthy finally and the three-point shooting she can bring to the table for South Carolina. I'm excited about her green shoes. <laughs> They're good-looking shoes. In the corner, Littleton on cue, buries the three. 
outside shooting is going to be vital for South Carolina because their bigs can be so dominant. They've got this big lineup in, so NC State goes to a zone. What's going to be open? Your perimeter players. And if South Carolina can knock those down consistently, watch out. And you saw the numbers from last year. Wasn't great from three. Littleton shot 31%. But that's why Dawn Staley's excited. She feels like there's real improvement there as Madison Hayes gets clobbered and will shoot two. South Carolina working the ball around the perimeter, inside out. When it goes inside, you have to come in. You have to, because Aaliyah Boston is going to score if it's one-on-one. -on -one. And so what does that do? That leaves your perimeter player open. Yeah, there are those green shoes. Those are sweet. Got a whole rainbow Yeah. the South Carolina team. That's right. We got pink on the floor, blue, orange. Very nice. You know, that's a part of it, too. This is, these players know, this is the opening game on ESPN. You're going to bring some feet heat. You're going to bring feet heat, you're going to have your hair done, all of it. Madison Hayes, a transfer from Mississippi State. Two-time Miss Tennessee after scoring over 3,000 points in her high school career. Part of the SEC All-Freshman team. Misses both free throws. Here comes Raven Johnson controlling the point. The number two overall recruit on the AZ FUD of UConn. Higher. Johnson gives it up. Under 10 to shoot. Bree Hall, another freshman, giving it up. Littleton, catch, fire, no, she knew it, followed it up, and put it in. Her pursuit of the basketball on that one was phenomenal. The second it left her hand, she knew it was off, and she just went after it and got it. What tremendous energy there. Five points from Littleton in the quarter. Kanane can't control it, got it back. Here's Jones, looking for some help. 10 points, South Carolina lead, and Boston just swallowed it up. See Bree Hall on the floor. Dawn Staley talked about Bree Hall being somebody who she could really use when her team needs to stop. She's talking about how they're going to work in the different freshmen on this team with so much talent and returning all 11 players from last season and a travel here. Seventh turnover for South Carolina. And here you see Destiny Littleton take the shot. Oh, it's off. Let me go get it. Look at that pursuit. The NC State players on the other side of the floor are doing a really good job boxing out, but no one boxed out the shooter. Johnson flips it out. Diamond Johnson can't hit the three. Rebound taken in stride by Bree Hall. Johnson last season at Rutgers was 50-40-90. As Littleton, a little too strong. Nearly taken away in the backcourt. Instead, an Aaron pass, and Hayes couldn't quite control it. What a women's college basketball doubleheader we have for you Sunday afternoon. Number 25, Texas, taking on the defending national champions. Number three, Stanford at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. And then it's the home opener for the eighth-ranked Hoosiers. They square off against All-American guard Ryan Howard and 13th-ranked Kentucky, both games on ESPN. And the app, one app, one tap. Really excited to see what Stanford looks like this year. Haley Jones, what an incredible NCAA tournament last season. She was just unbelievable in every big moment for Stanford. Brown Turner banks it in on the run. The ultra-athletic Jakea Brown Turner. I think NC State needs to continue to try to push because when they try to set up in their quarter court, they've found nothing easy. South Carolina's defense has been too good. You see Destiny Littleton directing the freshman Raven Johnson at multiple times in the half court. Johnson, the spin. The dish, 
Hall gets fouled by Crutchfield. That'll be the first team foul against NC State in the quarter and the first on Crutchfield. And one key player that NC State does not yet have, Jada Boyd, who is still recovering from tearing a uh, tendon in the hand wrist area. We're hopeful that she'll be back in early December. The sixth player of the year in the ACC. Hall flings it out. NC State wanted to travel. Here's Boston. Shot clock under five. Hall gets it out to Littleton. She has to put it up. Didn't have time for that and throws it away. Crutchfield zigging, dishing. Jones, the crossover, step back in, the money. One of the rare times where you'll, you'll say that a player is a tough guard for Halea Boston. Kayla Jones makes it a six-point game. Hall, Euros, that's going to be a travel. Bucket will not count. That is the ninth turnover for South Carolina. All of a sudden, NC State with a little juice here in Raleigh. Well, December 3rd, 2020, NC State eighth ranked, taking on top ranked South Carolina. Reina Perez, a big three to put NC State up with three minutes to go, and NC State held on, ending South Carolina's 29-game winning streak. This celebration afterwards, and NC State has won three straight games when facing a number one ranked team, Wes Moore, at the helm for two of them last season. NC State has settled down here in this second quarter. They've scored the last four. It's a six-point South Carolina lead. Nine turnovers for South Carolina in this first half now. Brown Turner gets space, missed it, and the rebound secured by Ami here. Ami here really played well in the NCAA tournament last season. Terrific athlete with good handles. It's nice when your four player can start leading the break the other way like Ami here just did. Boston, nice look. Littleton on the attack. Littleton banks it in. Big second quarter from Destiny Littleton, who has seven in the frame. Yeah, South Carolina's guards have been able to get looks in the paint off of dribble penetration when NC State has been in there man-to-man. -man. They're having a hard time keeping them in front. Perez gets fouled. And Reina Perez will shoot two. Well, coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, Reese Davis, Carolyn Peck, Jay Billis. Carolyn season storylines and a Champions Classic preview. What a trio. Looking forward to hearing from them. You know, it's interesting, Rebecca, we talked with Wes Moore earlier today at shoot around about you know, whether or not there was a sour taste left in the mouth of his team after falling in the Sweet 16 to Indiana. And he said, definitely disappointing, no doubt about it. And he said, to give you an idea of where the mentality of the players is at, when they were having their conference tournament champion rings done, there was the option to put three straight Sweet 16s on the rings, and the players said, absolutely not. We do not want that on there. They have higher aspirations. Boston gets denied by Kanane. Out of bounds, who the last hit? It's gonna stay here with South Carolina, just three to shoot. Leah Boston taking it hard at the basket. Kanane there with the length, able to get fingertip on it. Destiny Littleton is the only player to score this quarter for South Carolina. She has all seven points. Littleton 
And that's going to be a shot clock violation and the 10th South Carolina turnover. Dawn Staley upset about something from the possession. Here's Diamond Johnson. Perez peels back. Crutchfield, who they call Clutchfield for the way she shoots during the NCAA tournament. Kanane, out of the double, gets fouled. And that'll be the third team foul on South Carolina in the second quarter. I'm glad they finally got her the basketball. She was working really hard on that possession. Didn't get it the first couple of looks, but Reina Perez, who's a very good post-entry passer, finally able to get it to her. You can give her a touch. Maybe you draw a foul on Aaliyah Boston, or you get a double team and then can pass it back out. An 0 for 2 from the floor. By the way, Crutchfield 19 for 27 from 3 in her tournament career. Johnson step back two, a little too strong. Offensive rebound and another chance here for the Wolfpack. Kanane spinning, forcing, couldn't hit. Here comes Cook. Up the floor with Zest. Fading and banking it in. Great footwork. Great footwork because Diamond Johnson was able to stay with her for most of that possession, but then the step through got her the look. Eight points now for Cook on four or five shooting. An eight point lead for South Carolina. Brown Turner lofts it up and in. Six points now for Jakia Brown Turner. That's a tough shot. She had a couple arms right in her face. She's shown a nice touch in the mid range early. Boston. Me here given a runway, takes advantage of it, and traveled with that runway. 11 turnovers for South Carolina. Now, post players, they really work on their up and under and step throughs. Look at this guard, step around, get enough of a look, bank it in off the glass. We've seen a couple nice moves from Zia Cook so far in this game. A 25 19 South Carolina lead. Closing minute plus of the second quarter. Hobby, travel off the setup from Crutchfield. But you saw they're trying to bring Cardozo out, out on the perimeter. It was a nice pick and roll. She just didn't collect quickly enough. Kanane on the bench now. Boston as well. Smart. Don't let either of them pick up a foul with one minute to go in the half. The 6-7 Cardoso working from side to side in the paint. Finally gets it. Dishes it. Beal can't hit the three. Littleton has been so active in this second quarter. Defensively, that's what NC State is willing to give up. There's a three-pointer to Bree Beal, but you got to finish the defensive possession by getting the board. South Carolina, an 18-9 advantage on the glass. Shot clock down to three. Cook spins into traffic. Couldn't get it off. That is going to be the 12th first half turnover from South Carolina. Another low scoring battle between these two in the first half, similar to a season ago. We saw the drama it produced in December of 2020. NC State can hold for a final shot here. Brown Turner, five seconds left. Bullies inside, missed the banker. And a travel before time expired. Point four on the clock. You can catch and shoot. You can't dilly-dally, but you can catch and shoot. <laughs> no dilly-dallying, ladies. <laughs> Perez, close to maybe being a foul, it's not called. That'll do it for the first half. Aaliyah Boston, just two field goal attempts. Kanane, just three field goal attempts. The All-Americans haven't gotten it going yet. Morena Perez, Destiny Littleton, they have.
South Carolina, six-point lead at the half. Time to send you to Madison Square Garden with Reese Davis, Carolyn Peck, and Jay Billis. We welcome you back to the ACC on ESPN. Getting ready to start the second half in Raleigh, North Carolina. And top-ranked South Carolina, a six-point lead over NC State. Hey again, everybody. Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. You know, we came on the air talking about the talented members of the front court for each of these teams, but it's the back courts that have really shined. Yeah, South Carolina did a really good job. Their back court did. Uh, forcing the action, getting inside, still getting points in the paint, but doing it off dribble penetration. Zaya Phil was really good at <laughs> first half and the play of the first half. Destiny Littleton just going after her own miss. And for NC State, Raina Perez was the bright spot for them on the offensive end of the floor. She was four for five for 11 points. Only three NC State players scored in that first half. You see what happened with the pigs. Boston. One field goal make. Kinane, 0 for 3 from the floor. Last season, Boston averaged just under 14 points. Kinane over 16. But South Carolina is still playing through Boston. She was getting a lot of touches in the high post area, handoffs, being more of a facilitator. South Carolina shot 52% in that first half, was a plus 10 on the glass, but 12 turnovers thwarted them having a bigger lead and here the loose ball collected by Johnson the Rutgers transfer gives it up to Perez Reina Perez trying to turn the corner and Bree Beal would have none of it Bree Beal is a terrific defender and she's got the size in that matchup keeps her body here moves her feet their space with the body yeah very clean block up top Dawn Staley talks about Bree Beal says she is so steady she's the glue for our team kickball here is going to keep things with nc state and it's interesting because dawn also talked about Bree Beal having to shoot when teams sag off of her saying you know we don't need her to make a ton but we need her to shoot shoot the right shot and we saw it in the first half she had that wide open look in the right corner because nc state was playing off her Kanane stood up by Boston. Brown Turner hits the three. But what did we see in the first two possessions for both teams? For South Carolina, they got Aaliyah Boston. The ball cleared out the right side of the floor. Let her take it in. Kunane gets a touch inside. They still want to play through their big guns. Nine points for Brown Turner. It's one possession game and a foul here is going to be against Kunane. Her second personal. So Lisa Kinane gets the ball and you know, Malia Boston will just play her one on one. They're not going to double down on Kinane. And we've seen the first couple of possessions out of the gates. The insistence on getting the ball inside to Boston and Kinane as Beal hits the three. That's the look we're talking about. That teams consistently throughout her career at South Carolina have played off of her in a big way and sat in the lap of the post players instead. Johnson buries her first bucket as a member of NC State. Shot over 50% from the floor, over 40 from three, over 90 from the free throw line last season. At Rutgers. Free Beal. Flips it up and off. Loose ball. Corralled by NC State. Here comes Johnson. Busting out, finding space. Off on a three. Cook able to shake Johnson. And now we'll back it out. Saxton flashes, left it short. Here comes Johnson, zipping into the front court, all the way in for two. Oh, Anderson. 
Carson blasts ahead. Boston couldn't finish. Crowd ready to pop. That's not going to get it to happen. Beal on the steal. Lays it in. Good decision by Kinane to run by and to not pick up another foul there. Already two on Kinane. Crutchfield crosses over Boston, missed the reverse layup. Here comes Henderson, pushing pace. Henderson gets the whistle and is going to shoot a pair. Pace has been a little bit different here to start this third quarter than we saw in the first half. Both these teams pushing in a big way. First foul on Reyna Perez. Well, Rebecca, we asked Dawn Staley you know, if there's one thing that your team is going to have to do to make good on its potential this season, what would it be? And she said, you know, assuming our defense and rebounding is what it has been with this group, it's going to be converting in transition, which I thought was a really specific answer. And we've seen that the last two possessions, right? We saw Beal convert in transition, and now Henderson gets the line in transition. We saw it a number of times a season ago where they weren't able to do that. And Dawn specifically pointed to some of their big games in the NCAA tournament when they played against UConn. She said, we only converted about 42% of our transition opportunities. And she said, we need to get up near the 70s. Beal making it Saxton hopped over, nearly coming up with a steal. Here's Brown Turner. Kanane gets free, and Kanane has her first points of the game. The second team All-American a season ago. Boston on the bench for the moment for South Carolina. Cardoso in. Saxton faces up and buries the jumper. That's something Coach Staley told us as well. She was excited to see the mid-range from Victoria Saxon this season. Yeah, she said she's got a consistent mid-range now, which of course will make it harder for the defenders to help off her. Oh, nice dish. Brown Turner just couldn't finish. Five-point South Carolina lead. Anderson didn't pull at a lot of space there. And a travel. talked about Kanane getting more touches here to start the third quarter and here just a nice pass step through finish with the left hand she's very good finishing left and right Anderson leads it short one of those opportunities in transition here's Brown Turner Brown Turner scoops it in. A little pizza pie. And 11 for Jakia Brown Turner. Brown Turner is explosive, in particular when she can go to her left side. That's her strong hand. Knocked away. Turned over again. The flick ahead. Two on one. Perez. these sounds it's a one-point game thirteen for Perez and a foul here on Crutchfield one-point game third quarter action here we go buckle up they're starting to push the pace and it's a one-point game, Reina Perez with the finish. Ryan Rucco, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, joined now by the third leg of this tripod. Holly Rowe joining us from Madison Square Garden, where she has two outstanding games coming your way at the end of this one. Holly, I, I know, though, you're still engaged with what's happening here, and Reina Perez is standing out to you right now. That's right. I've been watching the first half. I wish I could be in every place at once, but Reina Perez, <laughs> a transfer into NC State last year, she is one of my favorite feisty players. She is the toughness, the DNA for NC State, and you're already
already seeing that here for them in this early part of the season. Now, meanwhile, on the other side of things, Holly, I, I know you want to see some more touches down low for Aaliyah Boston. That's right. I think Aaliyah Boston of South Carolina can be a player of the year. She should be the national player of the year. And so for she only has two points in the first half, that's not good enough. I've seen too many catches for her at the free throw line or three-point line. I know that might be what they're running, but I'd love to see her get the ball down low and go to work. She is unstoppable with her moves in the post, and I'd love to see more of her in the spots that she can score from. All right, Hal, tee us up for what you got going on tonight at Madison Square Garden. We are going to tip things off. We are going to tip things off right now with Kansas and Michigan State. This should be a really great game. A lot of new faces on both sides of this. And then the late game is Coach K, one of his final appearances here in Madison Square Garden. I talked to him today about this being the beginning of the end. He has announced his retirement at the end of this season. He said, Holly, I'm just going to enjoy every moment of tonight, this game, Madison Square Garden, the Mecca. He's taking it one day at a time. Well, how we can't wait to watch you later. Thanks as always, partner, and we'll see you soon. Awesome. I can't wait to see the finish of this game. You guys are going to rock it, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> well, right on cue, Ali. Jakia Brown Turner lays it in. She is 13. It's a one point game. This crowd fully engaged. 37 36. Zaya Cook hits the jumper, and every time NC State cuts it to one, South Carolina's had an answer. Yeah, we've seen South Carolina run that set where she's coming off to her strong hand on the right side off of a double screen, looking for her shot. You know, Holly was talking about Boston not getting enough touches. Well, during our conversation, it was three scores by three post players. Kanane gets swallowed up by Cardoso. Big still having their impact. Kunane going across the lane and against a lot of defenders, this shot will go in with a right-handed hook and not when you're going against 6-7. Six, six blocks now for South Carolina. They led the nation in that category last season. Johnson can't get it to go. That's out of bounds. Last hit, NC State. It's South Carolina basketball. South Carolina's biggest lead was 10 towards the end of the first half. They had 21 to 11. It was a low scoring first half. NC State has never led. Zaya Cook, not that time. That last hit the fingertips of NC State. What a women's college basketball doubleheader we have for you Sunday afternoon. Number 25, Texas taking on the defending national champions, number three, Stanford, three Eastern, noon Pacific. Then it's the home opener for the eighth-ranked Hoosiers. They square off against All-American guard Ryan Howard and 13th-ranked Kentucky. Both games are on ESPN and the app, one app, one tap. Ami here with the big putback. And six points now for Leticia Ami here. Johnson gets the foul on the pass. That is the fourth. Check that, make it the first team foul against South Carolina in this third quarter. Kalia Boston came out after the first three minutes of this quarter and has not come back in. Oh, look out. Foul call here against South Carolina. And a little collision afterwards. Free Beal gets in with her second. Leah Boston, a spectator at the moment. One of four from the floor. Four rebounds for Boston. South Carolina plus eight on the glass. Kanane. State and Brown Turner couldn't get it to her. Cardoso doing a nice job there. Yeah, but but Brown Turner needed to wait another beat, take a dribble towards the baseline to give herself a better angle to get that inside. Henderson finds the cutter. Cook gets tripped. Zaya Cook is going to shoot two. And South Carolina has done a nice Bowling job steadying things in this third quarter after NC State had built quite a bit of momentum. Kanane going to check out now. Camille Hobby into the game for the Wolfpack.
Cook with 11 points. She is the only member of South Carolina in double figures. For NC State, both Reina Perez and Jakia Brown-Turner have 13. Cook hits both. Lead is back to seven for South Carolina. Johnson kicks it out. Jones putting it on the deck. Lost it. Out of bounds. It'll stay with NC State. Interestingly, Destiny Anderson let it roll, thinking it had last hit the foot of Kayla Jones, but it had not. So another chance here for NC State. You see how valuable Kayla Jones is. I mean, she's helping break the press by handling the ball coming up the floor. As you see her going to the bench right now. She can extend, bring the four player out because of her ability to hit from the perimeter. She can dribble by you as well. Minutes just limited as she continues to return from the injury. 6-0 South Carolina over the last minute and 42 seconds. Kia Brown Turner has blood on her shirt and they're trying to figure out where it's coming from. You're able to pick that up pretty quickly, partner. <laughs> Crutchfield catch, fire, no. Oh, couldn't get the pass inside as it was kicked. Good idea from Henderson, and South Carolina will have it out of bounds with 1.30 to go in the third quarter, and a 43-36 lead over fifth-ranked NC State. Cook, rainbow mid-range, won't go. The box out from Brown Turner and a chance here for NC State. Zaya Cook has gotten that look multiple times out of the under out of bounds play. And a foul here is gonna be on a knee here. And that'll be the third team foul against South Carolina. And the third on Leticia Ami here. Be here a member of the Canadian Olympic basketball team in the 2020 Tokyo Games. Johnson, deep three, short, tracked beautifully by Javi. Another chance here for NC State. Perez bounces out, Crutchfield, no. Good look there for Crutchfield. NC State just two for 12 now from three-point range. That three too strong for Zaya Cook. Henderson dumps it in. Ami here lays it home. Ami here just continuing to be productive inside. We've seen her get to the offensive glass there. A beautiful duck in to be able to get the ball and score. Eight points for Ami here. Eight second difference game and shot clock. Johnson gives it up. Perez looking into Hobby. Johnson, five to shoot. Sets up Brown Turner, a three. He is good. A big one before the end of this quarter for NC State. Henderson, and a foul is called on NC State. They did not have one to give. Third on Crutchfield, and the fifth team foul. Yeah, that is not a foul you want to give with two seconds to go in the quarter being over the limit as Henderson hits the first. I'm just going to assume that the gentleman behind us is being picked up on mic, Rebecca, because <laughs> there's a lot of curtain to those pipes. He was not enamored with the call. Henderson hits both free throws. Johnson doesn't get it off. And that'll do it for the third.
NC State cut it to one, but South Carolina builds it back up to eight after three. Yeah, going back and forth, setting up for a good fourth quarter. Leticia and me here just powering it home. Jakia Brown Turner, gotcha. There's three. Tonight, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings live from Madison Square Garden in between games at the 11th Annual Champions Classic. It'll happen after Kansas, Michigan State, before Kentucky Duke. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, as well as a live interview with committee chairman Gary Barta, the University of Iowa AD, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And of course, we wish Dickie V could be there. We all send him our love, our prayers. We're thinking of you, Dickie V. And we certainly feel your spirit in all these arenas at this time of year. Held ball there, and the arrow belongs to South Carolina. They'll have possession beginning of this fourth quarter with a 47-39 lead. NC State extending their pressure. Take South Carolina a bit out of their comfort zone. See if you can get a turnover. Easy bucket the other way. Henderson finds the cutter. Cook. Cook doesn't hit that one. They've had good chemistry, though, Henderson and Cook. Perez, what a feed. Hayes will back it out. Here's Johnson, step back, three. Doesn't get the roll. Brown Turner scoops it up. Benane flips it up and in, muscling through a me here. Yeah, Kunane wanted the basketball, and she was not going to be denied. See South Carolina run a couple times now, getting Henderson the ball low and letting Cook make the cut yeah. from the high post area. And they've gotten some good looks off of it. Kunane with all six of her points in the second half. Ami here dumps it down. Cardoso flips it out, shot clock fading, and oh, are they going to call a foul before the expiration of the shot clock? And they may take a look at whether or not this foul occurred before the shot clock expired. Okay, right, let's see the shot clock, does it expire? Um, that's close. Now, interestingly, what determines this is not when the contact is made, it's when the whistle is blown. That's different than if you were evaluating this at the professional level. We'll step aside for a moment. South Carolina's six-point fourth-quarter lead over NC State as we tip off this college hoop season. Now, here's the play that was under review. Shot clock about to expire, and Zaya Cook fouled by Diamond Johnson, and... The question is whether or not the foul was called prior to the shot clock expiring. The officials have determined that it was called a foul prior to the shot clock expiring. And it will be two free throws for Zaya Cook. I'm laughing because a bunch of horns just got <laughs> placed right point blank range in front of us, Rebecca. In the meantime, though, let's let you know that college basketball season, well, it tips off today. You're seeing that. And what a way to start it off on ESPN of the app with the 11th Annual State Farm Champions Classic at Madison Square Garden this year. Number three, Kansas, takes on Michigan State at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And then it's number 10, Kentucky, squaring off against number nine, Duke, in Coach K's final season. It's a sonic blockbuster type of night. Looking forward to that.
That's a big foul. That's a big foul. Six point ball game. Zion Cook can extend it to an eight point game. It looked like NC State was about to get the ball back, make a charge the other way. And on the brink right of a turnover, Aaliyah Boston, one of the candidates for National Player of the Year, has been quiet thus far tonight. Just two points. But she's played well. She's gotten the ball. She's gotten a lot of touches at the high post. They've worked through her. She's been good defensively with three blocks on the night. Zaya Cook hits the first free throw. Cook with 13. She's had some big buckets in this second half after NC State had cut it to one. Here's Johnson, who's 2 for 11 from the floor, 0 for 5 from 3 in her NC State debut after transferring from Rutgers. Brown Turner's had a nice night. Looking for help. Gets denied twice, out of bounds going to stay with NC State 3 to shoot. And a really good defensive possession for Aaliyah Boston. She did not let the ball come into Kunane. She fought through the back screen at the beginning of the play, and then she got her hand on that shot. Trying to lob it to Kunane, and she just tosses it away. She had more time to operate than she thought. Henderson sets up Cook. She got it on a three. Cook's done a really nice job in transition, running to that deep corner on the left side, and Henderson looks for Zaya Cook with 16. The chemistry between Henderson and Cook has been outstanding tonight. Lead is back to 10, matching the largest of the game for South Carolina. Shot clock down to five. Penane nearly lost it. Johnson chucks it, rejected. Here comes a me here. And South Carolina will calm things down. Another good decision by Zaya Cook. Boston misfires on the three, knocked out of bounds by a me here. Ooh, they're going to say that last hit, Hayes. Henderson pushing in transition, and Beal goes to the block, and that leaves Zaya Cook open on the left side. Her teammates fired up. South Carolina, 17-2 edge in bench points in this game, as Kanane knocks that out of bounds. And, and that's some of also NC State feeling the loss of no Jada Boyd. Who was the ACC Co. Sixth Player of the Year season ago? Eight blocks for the Gamecocks, none for NC State. A me here, the ball fake, the attack, and knocked out of bounds. Eight to shoot. Kayla Jones able to deny the layup. Five to shoot. Anderson step back jumper is good. The backboard of South Carolina getting it done. Nine points, five assists for Henderson. Largest lead of the game for South Carolina. South Carolina was a terrific defensive team a season ago, a great rebounding team, and they look to be all of that again here early in this season. Their defense has been on point. Very little has come easy for NC State today. Remember Dawn Staley telling us last season it was the most defensively engaged team she's ever coached. She's coached some good defensive teams. Wow, look at him battle inside. Penane in Boston, and the foul is called against Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, I mean, they had to call something. Look at these two just going back and forth, wow. bumping, grinding, okay. Those two were teammates with Team USA over the summer, coached by Dawn Staley. Penane 
Kicks it out. Perez gives it back. Kanane can't get that one to go either. Kanane now three for nine. Boston. Thought about it for a moment. We'll let some more time run. A me here. And a foul called on the floor against NC State. Second team foul of the fourth quarter. How about the patience by me here? She caught it, assessed the situation, ball fake. You don't want to be sped up as a post player. She's playing the pace she wants to play. A me here. Short, rebound Jones. NC State looking for a little juice in this fourth. Brown, Turner gets denied by Boston. Boston was denying Kanane, so she couldn't get a touch. And she didn't leave too early where the ball could then be dropped to Kanane. Instead, she left at the perfect time. One of the reasons she is such a good shot blocker, whether it's her own player or off the ball. Perez slinks it in. Crutchfield couldn't handle it. NC State turns it over, and they just cannot get anything going offensively in this fourth quarter against South Carolina. Just two NC State points in the fourth thus far. When NC State went on their run in the third quarter is when they were able to get out and get some easy buckets, or easier looks at least in transition. Boston muscles in, couldn't finish. Another chance is good, plus the foul. Ilya Boston is persistent on both ends of the floor. She is one of the best shot blockers in the country here. Stays with her player, then knows the right time to come over to deny. And offensively, one on one, you can't stop her. Maybe the first time, but not the second. You just see how much power she has there. A lot of championship coaches on our air tonight. Dawn Staley, a champion in 2017. John Calipari in 2012. How about Bill Self in 2008? Tom Izzo leading Michigan State. And Coach K, yeah, he has quite a few. And gets ready to embark on his final season at the helm of Duke. Double header from the Garden. Coming up following the conclusion of this game. South Carolina and NC State. The earliest a top five matchup has happened in 20 seasons. Crutchfield, step back jumper is good. NC State had not scored in over four minutes and it scored just two points the entire quarter. Big bucket there for Crutchfield if NC State's gonna make a push. State extending their pressure, trying to pick up the pace of this game, pick up the play, pace of play for South Carolina. It was a one-point game for a while in the third. And then South Carolina locked down, and Zaya Cook made big buckets as Boston started to get going. I love that. They got Aliyah Boston, the ball in the high post area, but then they set an on-ball screen with a little, so you can't switch, and she just powers her way to the basket. Perez gives it up. Perez connects. Not a three. Rania Perez with 16. Both teams have struggled a bit from the three-point line. The little flip is good. What a finish from Destiny Henderson. And remember, the three-point line is further back this season, moving from 20 feet 9 inches to 22 feet 1 and 3 quarter inches, the international line. So probably going to be a little bit of an adjustment, you would think, especially early in the season. Yeah, I would expect the three-point percentages to go down a bit this year in women's college basketball. Then again, maybe you get the players who shouldn't be taking them, stop taking them just by moving it back a little bit. <laughs> Jones, step back three, is money. That shoots some life into this crowd. Ten point game, three minutes and ten seconds to go. 
tough buckets and not coming off of assists, but one-on-one -on -one moves by the players for NC State. Wolfpack needs a stop here. Henderson again, getting it in the post, going to work, just couldn't finish. Here comes Jones busting out. Jones going to head to the hoop and get fouled. Nice job cleaning up the defensive glass and then pushing pace the other way. NC State has got to look to see if they can get early offense when you're under three minutes and a 10-point deficit. Well, Kayla Jones, who had left knee surgery in April, got hurt in the NCAA tournament, was sorely missed by NC State. Westmore is not one for excuses, but you could feel her absence in that Sweet 16 loss to Indiana. She's had some big plays down the stretch here in the fourth. It's a single-digit game. Oh, what a find from Henderson going behind the back to get it up to Beal. Shot clock under 10. Cook behind the back, mid-range J off the mark, out of bounds. NC State has life with 2.18 to go. Really good defense by NC State to come out, keep Zia Cook on the left side of the floor, force her into a tough shot. Eight point game, here comes Jones. Jones held up, tries to call timeout, and is awarded the timeout. 2.09 to go, single digit game. Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo with you. Opening of the college hoop season and a good one here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Top ranked South Carolina, 59-51 lead on NC State. It was 57-43 moments ago, but NC State on a little burst has made it an eight point game, has the basketball. What's the focus right now on the offensive event for the Wolfpack? You just got to get a good look on this one and, and try to score so you can continue to set up your full court pressure. Brown Turner slides in, had an angle, just left it short. Here comes Henderson. And South Carolina has been smart. They've been smart not to take quick shots to understand that they need to use some clock on every possession. Henderson again working it down low, gets fouled. Destiny Henderson going back to the line. South Carolina has really gone to Henderson in the post. They played Aaliyah Boston facilitating from the high post area and on the left side of the floor, getting Henderson the ball down near the baseline and then cutting off of her. 11 points, five assists, four rebounds for Destiny Henderson. Aaliyah Boston, five blocks in this game. And Henderson sinks the first free throw. South Carolina, seven of 10 from the line. NC State, just four of six. Anderson cans both. Lead is back to 10. Penane, just three of nine from the floor in this game. Brown Turner gives it up. Penane, one on one, turning, left it short. South Carolina got to let that clock wind. John Staley's going to take a timeout. 118 to go in the fourth. South Carolina, a 10 point lead on NC State. You'd expect now NC State to start playing the foul game. The next one will put South Carolina at the line. How about Zia Cook? 16 points today, Rebecca, and some really big buckets when things got dicey in the third. Yeah, she's made some really good decisions. She's made really good decisions on the offensive end of the floor, and knowing when to look for her own shot, when to drive, step through. 
and when to make the passes to her teammates or slow things down. She's run the lane really well in transition, in particular getting to that left corner. 61-51 South Carolina lead. Opening game of the season. NC State upset South Carolina last December while South Carolina was the top-ranked team. Tough job getting it in. Henderson lost a shoe, got the basketball, grabbed the more important item. And now Boston is fouled and will go to the line. It's her third personal fifth. South Carolina, the first SEC program to sit atop the preseason poll in back-to-back -back seasons. Since Pat Summit's Tennessee Volunteers, 97-98, 98-99 seasons. Tamika holds ball, Tamika catchings. Some pretty good players on those Tennessee squads. South Carolina returning all 11 players from last season and adding the number one recruiting class in the nation. Perez finds Kinane, lays it in. Easiest bucket of the game for Kinane. And a foul in the backcourt against Perez will send Henderson to the line. Wolfpack foul from two, bring up Perez. First second personal. Sitting here watching and looking at South Carolina and wondering what don't they have in terms of a championship contender. They have everything. They have everything. And, and you think about it, Rebecca, I mean, we, act, we didn't see their freshmen in the second half the way we did in the first. But Raven Johnson got early minutes in this game. Number two recruit in the country. We saw Bree Hall, whose defense Don Silly really likes. Another freshman get an early run in this game. As the season goes on, who knows what weapons could develop to augment this already talented team. Perez hits the jumper. She's been uber impressive. Fling ahead. Cook gets to it. And now Cook is fouled by Perez. And Zaya Cook will go to the line. Destiny Anderson, I think she's going to have to tie this a little tighter. She lost the shoe again. <laughs> again. But again, didn't lose the basketball. She's handled the pressure really, really well. Really well, and they, NC State has sent it to her quite a bit here in the second half, and she's taking care of the basketball. Well, we saw the backcourt of Henderson and Cook play so well in the final four, and that loss to Stanford. They were both dynamic. Combined for 43 points. Henderson had a barrage of nine straight late in that game. As Cook goes one for two at the line. Door is still just slightly ajar for NC State. Perez trying to get space. Finds Kunane. Knocked away by Boston. And Kunane is going to foul a Mihir with 38.3 to go. And that should just about do it. A reminder, two games coming up from the garden at the conclusion of this one. Kansas, Michigan State. And then Duke, Kentucky. Be here with eight points. Misses the second. Lane violation is called on, I believe, Kayla Jones. So another chance at that free throw for a me here. And misses it again. 11 point deficit. Jones has it knocked away by a me here. She's called for the foul. Fourth team foul against South Carolina. Side out of bounds here for NC State. And if you're NC State, though, and you have any vision of try to pull off some wacky comeback. I mean, at some point in this, you need to be shooting threes. Right.
Crutchfield dumps it inside. Kanane loses it. Cook. It's going to be out of bounds off of Kanane. And we'll see if NC State backs off now and lets South Carolina dribble this out. Yeah, you don't have time to pass it in and then get it back out for a three. You just got to go up. Now, are they going to take a look at who that was out of bounds off of? They are. They will take a look at who this last hit. Final two minutes. And now the South Carolina chants are loud here in Raleigh. The last hit, Cook. Of competing chance. <laughs> From NC State and the South Carolina benches into it as well, chanting back and forth. Twenty four point eight to go. Tough to tell. Ball on the floor is that it's South Carolina basketball. Is there evidence that's clear enough to overturn that? Not from that angle, there's not. And it's going to be NC State basketball with 24.8 to go. An 11 point South Carolina lead. NC State trailed by 10 early, cut it to one in the third, and went back and forth for a little while at one before South Carolina put the clamps down on defense, got some great play in their backcourt, and built this double-digit lead. Brown-Turner floats in the jumper, and a timeout taken by Dawn Staley. Jakia Brown Turner with 18. Reina Perez with 18. And no one else in double figures for NC State. All right, Rebecca, despite the myriad of timeouts here and reviews down the stretch of this game, South Carolina has this one pretty sewed up. What has stood out to you most about watching both of these teams tonight? First of all, South Carolina looks terrific. They look like they're picking up right away where they left off a season ago, in particular on the defensive end of the floor. They have made everything difficult for NC State throughout the course of this game. Their backcourt has been terrific. We kind of knew what we were going to expect from Olea Boston. And, uh, but the guards for South Carolina, I like the pace with which they played, the decisions they made, their ability to to score when they could not necessarily play through the post. And NC State has had some struggles offensively just because South Carolina's defense has been so good. The only thing South Carolina dealt with to really inhibit that offensive attack was turnovers. They had 12 in the first half, just two here in the second half. And that's why they get a different result than last December. Top ranked South Carolina starts the season with a win in Raleigh. 66-57 the final. As the Gamecocks take down the Wolfpack in a battle of top five teams. A quiet night from Elisa Kunane. A big night from the backcourt of South Carolina. And the final score, South Carolina 66, NC State 57. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Bradley Wilson, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, and our entire crew, I'm Ryan Rucco. Coming up next, State Farm Champions Classic. Now let's send you to the Garden, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, and Holly Rowe.